How to raise baby chicks. Make a chicken scratch in your itch for pets. You can raise your own baby chicks at home with the proper equipment and care. You will need a hatchery, a brooder, bedding, a waterer, a feeder, a heat lamp, feed, and a chicken coop. Step 1. Order your chicks from a hatchery where they may have been hatched from an incubator. There are many hatcheries online and shipping usually takes place between February and September. Step 2. Make or buy a brooder, a container where the chicks live and keep warm. A brooder can be as simple as a modified wash tub or cardboard box or more elaborate. Step 3. Scatter cedar shavings over the bottom of your brooder for bedding. A chick's bedding needs to be changed three or four times a week or more often if it gets damp. Step 4. Put a waterer and feeder at one end of the brooder. Waterers and feeders can be ordered from the hatchery where you ordered your chicks and are relatively inexpensive. Step 5. Install a heat lamp over your brooder. The brooder should be kept at a temperature of 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the first week. Decrease the temperature by 5 degrees a week until the chicks have all of their feathers in 5 to 8 weeks. Allow the chicks space to move away from the heat in case they get too warm. If they're too cold, they'll huddle under the lamp. Step 6. Buy chick starter feed at food stores or online. You can purchase non-medicated feed or medicated feed that helps prevent parasite infections. Step 7. Watch your chicks grow. After four to six weeks, you can transfer your poultry pets to an adult chicken coop for their permanent home. Did you know the chicken can run at a speed of nine miles per hour? How to buy chickens. When buying chickens, keep these tips in mind to make sure you end up with healthy birds. You will need an eye for healthy attributes and money. Step one, choose a chicken breed that meets your needs. Keep in mind cold weather tolerance, chick rearing characteristics, egg color, breed personality, and rate of egg laying. Step two, look for a bird with bright eyes free of discharge. Step three, make sure the bird's beak is neither twisted nor overgrown. Step four, check the bird's nostrils for any sign of discharge. Discharge is a sign of illness. Step five, feel the bird's crop. If it is empty in midday, the bird may not be eating. Step six, check the feathers for lice. The feathers should be smooth, soft, and shiny. Birds may molt or lose their feathers once a year. The feathers grow back. Step seven, make sure the bird's vent is clean, pink, and smooth. Step eight, check that the bird's legs are smooth and free of raised scales. Step nine, Make sure the bird has a healthy weight, then collect your chickens and head back to the farm. Did you know? There are approximately 200 breeds of chickens around the world. How to raise egg-laying chickens. If you like the taste of farm fresh eggs but are miles from the farm, consider raising a few chickens yourself. You will need a chicken coop, nesting boxes, perches, chickens, chicken feed, water, and a heat lamp. Step one. Decide how many chickens you want. Most hens in full production will lay an egg every day. If you have too many chickens, you may not be able to use all the eggs. Acquire your chickens from a reputable supplier to ensure the health of the birds. Step two, build a chicken coop large enough to accommodate your flock. The coop should protect the chickens from rain, wind, and temperature extremes. Step three, place nesting boxes in the coop where the chickens can lay their eggs. The boxes should be enclosed and nest-like. Boxes fitted with rear trap doors make it easier to gather eggs. Step four, add adequately spaced and arranged perches to the coop so that the chickens can roost at night. Perches can be made from small tree branches, wooden poles, dowels, or even an old wooden ladder. Place litter under the perches, removing it when it gets soiled. Step five, feed the chickens layer pellets or grain to maintain egg production. They will eat almost anything, including table scraps. Step six, provide fresh water in a bowl, checked daily in hot weather. Step seven, install a heat lamp in the coop if you live where winters are cold. This will keep the chicken's water from freezing. Did you know? Chickens have played a central role in cancer research and were instrumental in the discovery of the first tumor viruses. How to build a chicken coop. A chicken coop provides shelter for your chickens and gives them a place where they can lay their eggs. This coop comfortably fits four chickens. You will need two six-foot, two-by-two-inch pre-drilled boards, six three-foot, two-by-two-inch PD boards, 
six four foot two by two inch PD boards, two two foot two by two inch PD boards, two three foot two by four inch PD boards, two eight foot two by four inch PD boards, an eight by four foot piece of plywood, a nine by four foot piece of siding, scrap wood, screws, two barrel bolts, a drill, staples, a circular saw, a staple gun, chicken wire or metal mesh, plastic roofing, and six hinges. Step one, build a six by three foot base for the coop by constructing a frame. Screw two three foot two by four boards across the ends of two parallel eight foot two by fours, about a foot in from the ends. If you need to make the coop larger, consider how many chickens you plan to house. A good method is to add three to six square feet per chicken. Step two, construct a frame for the side wall by screwing two four foot two by twos perpendicularly to the ends of the base frame, a foot in from the front and back. Screw in a third four foot two by two between the first two, four feet behind the front post. Now screw a six foot two by two across the tops of the post to finish off the wall. Build another identical frame for the opposite wall of the coop. Step three, construct a front and back wall by screwing three foot two by twos across the tops of both side walls at the front and back. Screw another three foot two by two across the center of the front wall. This will be the outside roost support. Step four, wrap and staple chicken wire to the front wall, as well as to the front four foot sections of the side walls. Step five, at the same height that you attach the roost support to the front wall, construct a square frame within the unwired back area of the coop by screwing three foot two by twos across the insides of the rear upright boards and across the insides of the upright boards that will frame the front wall of the hen house. Screw two foot two by twos across the insides of the two unwired side walls in line with the other boards you just attached. Mount the outside roost to the support on the front wall, attaching the other end to the hen house frame. Step six, use the plywood to make a floor for the hen house across the square frame, screwing the plywood to the frame. Construct an identical rectangular ring of boards at the top of the upright two by twos. This will support the roof of the hen house. Step seven, build a nesting box using the remaining plywood. The box should be about one cubic foot. Leave the front side open and place the box so that the open side faces and rests up against one wall of the hen house. At a raised level, mount a two by two or piece of scrap wood across the center of the hen house to serve as an indoor roost. Step eight, use the circular saw to cut a piece of siding to completely cover the wall opposite the nesting box. Cut the section in half vertically, then make another vertical cut one and a half inches in from the edges of each half to make a hinge line on each side. Step nine, screw two hinges across the left hinge line and two across the right hinge line, about five inches from the bottoms and tops of the doors. On the back of the right door, screw a door catch to the inside edge, shorter than the length of the door so that it sticks out about an inch. Screw the double doors to the coop frame. On the top and bottom of the right door, attach barrel bolts, screwing the bolt catches to the frame. Step 10, cut a piece of siding to fit the wall adjacent to the nesting box. Make cuts for a rectangular egg door in the middle of the siding, starting eight inches in from each side and four inches from the top. Remove the door piece, flip the door frame over, and screw door catches around the inside edges of the door hole so that they stick out about half an inch. Step 11, replace the door piece in the hole and screw two hinges across the hinge line on one side of the door. Then screw a barrel bolt onto the other side of the door, attaching the bolt catch to the door panel. Screw the egg door wall to the coop frame. Step 12, cut and attach to the frame a piece of siding to fit the back wall, running from the ground to the roof. Cut a section of siding to cover the wall facing the open air area of the coop. Cut a square foot hole to serve as an entrance into the hen house. Using extra plywood or scrap wood, attach a ramp that will run from the entrance to the ground. Step 13, wire and staple the top of the coop as well as the area underneath the hen house without siding. Attach the plastic roofing over the hen house making sure you place it at a slant so that water will run off toward the back. You'll be eating fresh eggs for breakfast in no time. Did you know? Modern chickens are believed to have descended from the red jungle fowl of Southeast Asia. How to buy cattle. Cattle are usually bought and sold at livestock auctions. Here are some tips to help you in your bidding. You will need an auction, market prices, inspections, a stock agent, and a view of the auction. Optional, a ground level view. Step 1. Inform yourself about market prices before you attend the auction. Plan on attending a couple of other auctions before you start bidding. Step 2. 
Arrive at the auction early so that you can inspect any livestock you may be interested in. Step 3. Inspect the cattle carefully to make sure they are healthy and in good condition. Observe the cattle at ground level, not just from the walkway above the pens. Step 4. Consider hiring a stock agent to bid for you if you are new at livestock auctions. The sales barn office can put you in touch with someone who will buy for you. Step 5. Take a seat where you will have a good view of the bidding and follow the sales. Hopefully, you'll leave with a good purchase. Did you know? The ancient Romans used auctions to liquidate property and estate goods. How to buy cattle brands. Most states have laws governing the transfer of cattle brands. Here are a few tips to keep in mind when buying one. You will need a brand inspector's office, a governing agency, a list of brands for sale, and a distinctive brand. Optional. Open characters. Step 1. Check with your state brand inspector's office or local governing agency to see if they keep a list of brands for sale. Older brands are often sold with ranches or by themselves. Step 2. Make sure the brand you are considering is distinctive and readily recognized. Opt for a brand with open characters such as C or a bar. Closed characters such as A, B, or 8 tend to blotch and become hard to read. Step 3. Record the acquired brand in your state brand inspection office or with the local governing agency. Remember, unrecorded brands offer little or no protection and result in confusion. Did you know? The branding of cattle and livestock commenced before 2000 BCE. How to buy cattle feed. Cattle require unlimited fresh, clean water and some types of grass hay daily. Add supplements if your animal's nutritional needs are not adequately met. You will need water, grass hay, nutritional requirements, a forage test, and nutritional supplements. Optional, tabulated nutritional requirements and a nutritionist. Step one, determine the specific nutritional needs of your cattle. The U.S. National Research Council tabulates nutritional requirements for beef cattle. Steers, heifers, and calves all have different requirements. Step two, have a forage test performed to determine the nutritional value of the available feedstuffs. Your county agricultural office can help with this. Step three, compare the results of the forage test with the nutritional requirements of your cattle. Step four, determine which supplements are needed to make up for any nutrient deficit. Consult a nutritionist for guidance if you are not used to doing this. Step five, purchase the feed supplements required to balance the cattle's rations. Look forward to a healthy herd. Did you know? Cattle may consume up to 2.5% of their body weight in food on a daily basis. How to milk a cow. Modern milking parlors use machines, but milking a cow by hand is an ancient art. Here's the utterly perfect way to do it. You will need a dairy cow, a grain mixture or hay, a one-legged milking stool, and a stainless steel milking pail. Optional, milking gloves, warm water, soap or sanitizing solution, and milk pasteurizer. Step 1. Feed the cow in the early morning with a grain mixture or hay. Step 2. Set your stool on the right side of the cow's udder. A one-legged stool lets you swivel to be close to the udder. Wash and dry your hands before milking or use latex milking gloves. Gently wash the cow's teats with warm water and a commercial sanitizing solution. Step 3. Sit on the stool and hold the pail firmly between your legs. Step 4. Raise your thumb and grasp the front teat with your fingers together in a gentle grip like holding a tennis racket. Squeeze and release, alternating hands until the teats are empty. Step 5. Switch to the back teats. Cows sometimes get mastitis, which leads to sore udders. If you see signs of cracking on the teats, call the vet. Step 6. Repeat milking in the early evening. You're not done until the cows come home. Did you know? One cow produces about 350,000 glasses of milk in her lifetime. 